What's going on guys and welcome back to my channel. Lately, so many of you commented out and you asked for a video how to debug code using IntelliJ. And as you know, I'm always trying to read all the comments and also trying to answer your comments as fast as possible. So now here is the answer for your comments. In this video, we will see together and I will walk you step by step how to debug code using IntelliJ and I will show you advanced debugging with IntelliJ. Before we start, if you're new to my channel, just go ahead, hit the subscribe button and join us. And of course, don't forget to join the community on Discord and on Facebook group so you will be part of the greatest community that we are building right now where everyone is helping everyone. If you have any issues, if you have any problem with your code, just feel free to drop a message, drop your screenshots in, on the Discord server and you will absolutely find someone helping you, including me. Also, Discord is one of the best places where you can suggest video ideas and I'm always checking that and trying to see everyone's comment and everyone's feedback and you are my source of inspiration and my source of motivation. I will always try to answer your requests and create your videos and all the videos you are asking. And last but not least, I also want to invite you to join me on my website where you can find so many useful and premium courses about how to learn software engineering, especially and mainly using the most famous framework on earth, which is the best framework for me, the Spring Boot framework. Also, there is something really, really big is getting cooked right now and I want you to be part of it. So don't miss the opportunity and subscribe and create your account on my website so I will notify everyone by email. So now with no further ado, I wish you happy debugging. First of all, before we start, let me walk you through the project or the sample code that we will be using for this video in order to showcase the debugging. So here we have a simple project that will manage students. So here I have my student object, I have my student DAO, service, validator and the controller. So briefly to walk you through the elements. So a student is characterized by an ID, first name, last name, grade, and also we have a date of birth and a list of hobbies. Then we have a student service. So this student service has a list of methods like create, find by ID, find all, and also display student grade. So these are just like a simple methods. And then we have our student DAO service here or student DAO class. And if we go there, we see that we have a method create, get by ID and find all. Then we have our student validator, which is used in the student service right here. So if you will go to the student validator, it's just a simple validation class with a simple validating validation method called validate student. And it takes a student as a parameter. And then all we, all we do is just check if the, the element or the mandatory fields that we defined in the student object are there or not. So for example, here it's just checking the first name. And if the first name is empty, we just return an error message or a message telling that type first name, type last name, and so and so forth. So it's just a simple application. Nothing is complex, nothing is complicated. It's just for showcasing and focusing on debugging. So absolutely this, uh, this application has, or this sample application has some bugs and we will see how we can find out these bugs. So this is the project. Now let's move on and let me show you how to start a debug session, how to start debugging and use this powerful IDE and TDJ to debug your code. Now let's see how we can start a debug session. So first of all, if you go to the view menu and then tool window and you have a menu here called debug, if you open this one, you will see this pop up right here. So here it says to debug your code, do one of the following whether click on the run icon in the editor gutter or select debug in the editor context menu or launch a run configuration to start a debug session. So let me show you an easier way. So here, this is our main class, which is 
buggy application so i already called the application buggy application because this is the purpose of this video and then if you click on this play right here you see run the buggy application or buggy code application class or debug the buggy code application class so this is the first option the second one just right click on the class name here just select it right click on it and then you will see the two options whether to run the application or to debug the application the third one is from here you have this uh, play button or this debug button but before we move on let me show you how you can have the same ui and the same look and feel as i have in my IntelliJ. so for the next when you do it uh, on your own you will not be confused and maybe you you lose a little bit the layout and so on and so forth so to do that just go to IntelliJ and then settings and then here in appearance and behavior you will see a menu called new ui beta so here just click on enable the new ui and then click also on the compact mode because this is the look and feel that i'm using right now just when you use the compact mode it will like it will take up less screen space as mentioned already in here and then click ok and absolutely here for the appearance you can use whether dark or light theme it's up to you so now let's close this one and here let's we i just want to make sure that you have the same look and feel as i do all right so now the third option as i mentioned whether you click here or here but sometimes you don't have by default this buggy code or like the application name to run it directly also like if you already added the configuration you can just click here to to run the application normally or to debug the application Otherwise, you can just click, if you don't have anything in this list, click on edit configuration. And then here you see this plus button to add a new configuration. So just click on it and then filter for Spring Boot. So when you click on Spring Boot and then you will have this new configuration right here. So just give it a name. So let's say, for example, test or test debug and then run on your local machine and then you select the java version so here normally you should get everything by default and then all you need to do is to select the main class so our main class is called the buggy application and it's coming from the package com.halibu.buggy so if i select this one all i need to do is just to click on apply or OK, and then I will have it in the list. But I won't apply it since I already have my configuration for the same class. So I will just click on cancel here. And then we see that you will have the, the configuration in your recent configurations. So let's click on debug to start the application in debug mode. So here. So this is just an old configuration, I, I guess. Uh, so here when you start your application in debug mode first the first thing to notice is you will see this blue button right here or this icon with a blue background because you are running the application in debug mode so if i stop and run in a normal way you will see that now this is the one selected so it's just running and here's just debugging so this is the last debug session we had or the one the one i just started and here this is the run so let me rerun the application in debug mode. And now the application is up and running. So here we see that we have threads and variables, console, actuator, and you see a bunch of other buttons that we will explore just right away. So when we run the application in debug mode, so here we see that we have, first of all, three tabs. So here we have threads and variables, and we will come back to this just in a few moments. And then we have the console. So here we see all the logs that our application will print. And then we have this actuator in case you have actuator in your spring application. And then we see that we have these two buttons. So the first one is to rerun the application in debug mode. And this one is also is just to stop the application. So these two buttons are similar to the buttons that we have in the top right here. And then we see that we have these buttons right here. So this one is to resume program, pause program, step over, step into, and step out. And here we see the list of the breakpoints that we have within our application. So if we click in here, we see that those are the default ones. 
you can also add and create other type of breakpoints but those ones are the default one and they always exist so here for example if i just enable this one it will be enabled and we will see this debug or this breakpoint when something happens but we will see that in details and then also if you have active breakpoints and you want to disable them just click on this mute breakpoint buttons so if you click on it it will mute all the breakpoints and you will not have any breakpoint so now i mentioned so many times breakpoint breakpoint but what is a breakpoint so let me close this one and now before we see what is a breakpoint let's go and run the application and try to send a simple request and see what happens what what is the output of our rest api that we have right here and then let's start our debugging session my api is available under this url localhost and then the port and then api slash v1 slash student and i will perform a post request just to persist a new student so let's just click on send and see what will happen so here we have a 500 which is an internal server error and this is because first of all we don't handle the exceptions and the second reason is because we have something wrong in our api also if you want to learn more about exception handling i would invite you to go and check the video exception handling in the in the spring boot playlist so now let's go back to our api and let's see the console log so here we see that we have a null pointer exception and it was like at this level so first of all let's understand how spring displays the exceptions so the exception stack comes always from the first place where the exception has happened and then it goes down until the last one so here we see that the last one is the student controller so if i click on it and then it will take me to the save method and this is the endpoint that i just invoked to try to create a new student and then if i go a bit up in the exception stack so we will see that this is this is coming from the student service and then we have the student validator so the student service is making a call to a validator dot validate student and this is the method that we saw together right here so now let's see how we can debug this code so i will close everything and i will open again just the controller so i'll just start from the bottom level to the top level so here all i need to do is to add a breakpoint and to add a breakpoint all you need to do is to click on the line number right here so let me make it for screen so when you click on the line number it will add a breakpoint and here you need to be careful so for example if i try to add the breakpoint to the line 27 we see here that it's not applicable because here it's just there is no executable code that can be fi found in on the line 27 the same for the line 28 line 30 line 31 and so and so forth so the line 30 it's okay because it's just after this one and it's the end of the method and here so i'm um, if even i click on the line 31 i'm not able to add a breakpoint even here line 32 and so on and so forth so i get now you get the point you need to add a breakpoint to an executable code so if you add a breakpoint to a different place whether it will not work or and also like don't add a breakpoint to the wrong place so le now let's let's first see let's hit back the endpoint and let's see what will happen so now if i click on send again we will see that IntelliJ will interrupt the execution of the code and then automatically it will display this ui right here so this is the one that we were checking together so here we still have the console i will just clear it right now and we have the actuator so since we don't have it i will show you how we can also uh, adjust and manage the the ui and the layout of the debugging now let's go back to the thread and variables so here we see that we have a bunch of variables right here so first we have this variable layout and here we see this so this refers to the current class okay so the current class is my student controller and inside this i have a service so here i see all the fields or all the the global fields of my class and here i have only one which is the service so if i 
open the service, it will also load all the dependencies that are inside the service. So here I know that in my student service, I have two, two fields. One is the student DAO and it's called DAO and one and the second one is the student validator and it's called validator. And as you can see here, it's DAO equals student DAO and validator is student validator. And the at and this number, so this is the memory address of this variable. Also, if I open the DAO, I see that I have a list of students, which is this variable right here and so and so forth. So now I guess you get the point. So each time you have a, you have a, a field, you, you will be able to see all the all the fields of that class so for example the validator it has no fields so here it's displaying no fields and then we see that we have now a student an object student or a variable called student and it's annotated with the p so p refers to a parameter so this means that this is the student parameter that i'm getting right here and then within this student i can just uh, expand the student object and I will be able to see all the fields that I have inside. So for example, I have an ID which is null, first name which is Ali, Bo Ali, and grade which is one. And these are the same variable that I sent from Postman right here. So first name, last name, grade, and date of birth. And then we see again the service and so and so forth. So this is the service and here this is the watch. So here we are watching over the service and I will explain this watch later on. So now we have these buttons right here. So let's explore what are the functions of each one. So the first one is just to resume the program. So for example, if I found out or if I made a wrong breakpoint in the wrong place or if I missed something or like it depends what is the scenario you can just click on resume and it will move on and resume the program unless it finds a different breakpoint okay so for example I will just make this as uh, as a test or like a small test just to show you I will add breakpoint in line 16 right here if I resume the program it will resume from this point, but if it finds another breakpoint in the call stack of my program or of my application, it will also stops at this level. So here after this breakpoint, I don't have any other breakpoint. Now if I click again on resume program, the program will resume the full execution. So I will remove this one and then I will go back to postman and send again the request. And let's continue exploring the, the functionalities. So here we have the next button, which is step over. Step over means that I want to pass to the next instruction. So here, like assuming that I have line number one and in line number two, line number three, like I mean line of codes. So step over, will it will move from line to line. So here, if I click on step over, it will directly go to a different class, which is the invocable handler method. So this is the place where the exception will be caught by the framework or by the JDK. So this is not our goal right now. So let's just resume the program because here after just after this create method, which makes a call also to the to the service and the exception is happening is happening right here. So that's why after resuming or after stepping over this line, we just went to the exception or to this class, okay? So now I will resume the program and again, I will send back the request to have my breakpoint again. So now we have the next button, which is step into. So this one is super important because for example, when you are debugging, you don't need to have breakpoints everywhere, okay? So you can just debug and each time you, you encounter a method and you want to see what's happening inside, all you need to do is to click on this button right here or also you can see the shortcut for it which is F7 for example and you can step into. So when I click on step into, it will directly go to the definition or to the code of this method. So here it will go to the service.create so it will step into the method called create. Okay, and now we see that we are at this level. And again, when we move to this class, we see that we have 
all the variables of this class. So here, if I expand this, we see that we have DAO and validator, and before that, it was the student, okay? And we have also the watchers, which is here in this case, the DAO and the validator. All right, so now let's see if I want, for example, to step out of a method, all I need to do is to click on this one and it will step out like it will resume the execution of this method and step out of it. And of course, since we have an exception because we have a wrong, a wrong and a buggy code, so it will step out of this method and goes to this one. So I will just resume. And now let's go and let me show you other options and the magic of debugging. Now let's change the breakpoint to the to the service and I will remove it from here. And then I will go back and send again the request. And now let me show you something which is really important to know about debugging. So here what we have, we have this call to this method and we have the student object. So for example, if I want to perform some operations or like to write even some code on on my variables or like uh, invoking my code and my services and so on and so forth. So IntelliJ allows us and give us the, the, the tool to do that. And this, for example, if I select this student variable or even this validator or any of the code. So let's say, for example, student and then right click and then you have evaluate expression. So if I, if you click on evaluate expression, so let me make this one a little bit bigger. And then you click on evaluate. You see it will evaluate the value and, the, and this expression. So for example, I can do dot get first name and then click on it. So here we see that we have the result and it will return the value or the evaluation of this code that I'm writing. For example, if I want to try, if I can transform this to lowercase or to uppercase, I can perform all the code that I want without a need to change the code itself and, re and test again and again and again. Okay, so for example, if I close this one, now if I want to evaluate this expression, all I need to do is just select it, right click and then evaluate expression. So then click on evaluate. And in case something is wrong, we will see the exception that was thrown by the method. So here it says method through null pointer exception. And then we see all the exception stack. So here we have the cause, we have also the message and we have everything we need in order to investigate and to understand the exception. So here it says null pointer exception cannot invoke java.util.list.isempty because the return value of this get hobbies is null. So this, this is giving us the exact or like the root cause of the issue. So now let's close this one. And now in case, for example, just an example, in case I want to change some value. So here this is evaluating an expression. Let's evaluate the student again. And now we have the first name, last name and grade. So for example, if I want to change the value of the first name. So imagine, for example, I have a special case or like I'm testing a scenario for my application and then I need to change the value for, for something or for some variable or some field. So I don't need to rerun the application or go back maybe to Postman and type again the value. I can do everything inside IntelliJ. So if I right click on first name right here, you see that you have something called set value. Also, you can copy the value. You can again evaluate the expression and you have a bunch of options that you can explore right here. So if I do set value and I call this one John, for example, for example, and click on OK and then close. So here, let's go back and see the impact. So we see that now the first name is John and it's no longer Ali. Also, you can do it from here. So if you expand and then right click and then set value. And here, for example, if I change it to John Doe, you see that the value of this last name also has changed. Again, to make sure, you can evaluate the expression, evaluate the student, and you see that the first name and the last name has changed, okay? Even on Postman, you, st you sent Ali and Bo Ali, but in, on IntelliJ, you can change everything. 
All right, so now let's move on with the debugging session. So here I want to step into this method. So you already know how to do that. Just click on step into. And now we are inside the validator class. So now I can first, for example, if I have my doubt, I can evaluate this one, right click, evaluate, and then you will see the output or the result of this expression. So it's false. This means we will not go here. So let's move to the next. And then we have the last name. And since we know that we have the last name in here, we can move to the to the next one. So st click on step over. So it will move to the, to the next uh, expression or the, the next line of code. And then here we are testing the date of birth. So for example, if I want to evaluate this one, just again, right click and you can perform anything you want. So here it's just are checking if it's after or for example, if I want to uh, to get anything or like to do any operation on the date, for example, to get the day, get the day of week, day of year, and I just can do that, write the code, type it, and you will see it right here, okay? So the day of year, the, the date we passed represents 315. So let's close this. Now, if I do step over, we see that even here, I don't have the issue. And now if I try to evaluate this one, right click, evaluate expression, and then click on evaluate, we see that the null pointer exception is happening at this level. So now I can resume my program and then I can fix the issue. So now to fix the issue, all I need to do is just to whether like I need to do a null check, of course, or just use a tool or like use a utils class to do that. And in order to fix this, let's just fix it together. We can do collection or we can use collection utils dot is empty and then we can pass the list. So this is empty method. Let's restart the application and let me show you what's happening inside. Or even let's go and check directly the code. So this is empty method from the class collection utils. It will return if the collection is null or the collection is empty. So if the collection is null or empty, so the, the result will be true. Otherwise it will be false. So here we have our null check and we will no longer have the null pointer exception. So let me go back to postman and send again the request. So let's click on send. And now let's evaluate again this validator. And also you have it in here, like if you click on these three dots, you see also evaluate expression. So if I do validator dot validate student, and then I pass my student and click on it, we see that we have one result hobbies are empty. So this is the result of or this is coming from here. So from the student validator because the hobbies, we passed an empty list. Now, if I go back to Postman, we see that we have no longer any exception. We don't have any um, any logs like or something like that, but the API is not correctly imp implemented because even with an exception, we have a 201 created. So this should not be the case. So this we can maybe fix it later on, but let's continue focusing on debugging. Also, one of the most powerful features of debugging is something called conditional debugging. So, or conditional breakpoints. So this means that I want to have a breakpoint right here, or I want this breakpoint to be hit only if it fits a specific condition. So for example, I want to hit the breakpoint in this line only if I get student.getHobbies is null, okay? So here, all I need to do is just right click on the number or on the line number right here. It's just a, not a simple click or a simple click and then do right click on it. So here you will see this small pop up. And first you will see that if you want to enable or disable the, the breakpoint, and then if you want to suspend it or not, so it's not suspended. And then we can also add a condition. So the condition, it's just a Java statement, as always, just Java code. And here, for example, I want to hit this breakpoint only if my student dot get hobbies equals null, for example. Okay, and then click on done. And you will see that the icon of this breakpoint has changed. And now we see that we have this interrogation mark. So now if I run the code again, 
and click on send, we see that we hit this breakpoint and the reason why is just because the hobbies is null, okay? Or the list of hobbies is null. So now let's just change this condition and let's see if we are able to hit the breakpoint or not. So here, instead of get hobbies, let's say get first name. So we know that the first name is not null. So I will just change it. Now I will send again the request and we, we see that we didn't hit the breakpoint at all. And we always see that we have 200, okay? So, but if I remove this first name from here and send again, we see that we automatically go back to IntelliJ and we hit the breakpoint because the first name now is null and that's why we see the, this breakpoint. So like this, you can even refine your breakpoints and have conditional breakpoints in case you don't want to just have a general one and you want to see the breakpoint or like we want to hit it only if you have a specific case or specific condition. Now let's add a breakpoint at this validate student method. And I just want to add this breakpoint right here because I want to hit a far away class. So we know that the stack starts from the controller service and then the student validator or the student DAO, which is the latest or like the, the latest in the stack in the call stack. Now, if I just send again a request and hit this breakpoint right here, but if I want to go back from this breakpoint, from this class student validator, if I want to go back to the student service or the student controller, how can I afford this? How can I do this operation? So this is called the drop frame and this allows us to go back in code and I personally call it the code time machine. So this will allow us and make us capable of working or navigating through the code. But first let's understand and see what is the drop frame. So the drop frame, I'm talking about this part right here. So the drop frame option is a debugging tool that's available in IntelliJ and it allows you to go back to the previous stack frame in the execution stack without having to restart the debugging process. So it can be really useful if you've stepped too far into your code and you want to go back a few steps back. So now, as you can see in here, the first three lines is validate student from the student validator and then create from student service and then save from student controller. And the stack of this drop frame starts from the bottom, which is the first thing that gets executed until you, you hit the current class or the current breakpoint you have. So here, if you just go back, you see that we have do dispatcher, do post service and so on and so forth. So even if you want to understand how the spring framework works or how your class or specific program is running and what is the call stack, all you need to do is to add breakpoint somewhere and then just follow the drop frame. So now, as I mentioned, we are in the student validator, which is the selected one. So for example, if I want to go back in time and start my, uh, my debugging from the student service, all I need to do is to click on this one right here. And now we see that the breakpoint, so we don't really have a real breakpoint, but debugging is from this step. So if I do step over, we see that we are able to move to the next part. Okay. So now, I will just resume the program and I know that I removed the first name. So I will bring it back and send again the request. So also I will go back to the student service. And if I do step over, we see that we are moving to the next step. Okay. So now if I resume or if I go back to the student service, I can even add my breakpoint here or step over and so on and so forth. So this drop frame right here will allow you and help you navigate through the code and see what's going on on a different class called stack. Now let's see how we can improve the debugging process and how we can customize the view options. And now here in IntelliJ and in this debug view, you have this button right here called layout settings. And here you can select what you want to display and what you don't want to display. So here, for example, we see that we have frames, variables, console, 
threads, memory, actuator, and so on and so forth. So here we have the actuator. We have also the variables right here. So for example, in case I want to remove the actuator, all I need to do is to uncheck this one. So I no longer have the actuator right here. Also, there is something important. So which is using the memory view. And here, if you click on the memory, you will see that we will have this view right here. And since we don't have now any classes loaded, so just let, let's click on load classes. And here you will see what are the classes that occupying the most of the memory. So within the memory view, you can pro it can provide a real time update on the memory status of your program during the debug process. And to enable this one, as I mentioned, just go here and click on memory. And then you will be able to see how much memory is being consumed by each object in your program, as you can see right here. And this can be really useful when trying to track down especially memory leaks, or if you want to optimize your application memory usage. So here you can just detect easily and in a fast way, what are the objects that are consuming the most. So now I will just remove this memory view. And again, you have also the, the option to restore the default layout, which is the default one proposed by IntelliJ. And also like you can play with a different, uh, with, the, with the different options or like the layout that you want to have for your debugging sessions. So that was it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. And again, I want to remind you, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and be part of our community on Discord and Facebook. And finally, just go ahead and subscribe to my website and wait for the biggest announcement. Thank you so much and don't forget to share this video with your friends and also comment out what is the next video that you want to see. Thank you so much and see you next time.